some of the complexities that I see would be that in many cases, uh, the ability to align the governance risk and compliance folks in an organization and the cybersecurity folks who deploy the tools and you know ingest the analytics and um, are responsible for the outputs. I often find there's a misalignment between those two divisions within an organization. Um, and the, the cyber guys are overstretched, under-resourced, and the GRC folks are asking for you know, best in class security. So I, I guess, Tim, I'll start off with you. Do you share my perspective that 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 that, that delta is, exists between these two different stakeholders within an organization? And, and is that changing or is that evolving with technology? So 100% agree. Um, without, you know, working for, a, let's say, a bank and, and being in that that situation, I, I couldn't tell you if it's changing. You'd, you'd hope it would be. Um, I mean, they, they kind of have different objectives, really. You know, one is to uh, kind of meet the regulatory needs uh, and the other is to keep the the, uh, the organisation secure and they don't always match. I mean, I, I, I come back to and this, 10 years ago, I had a conversation with a, with a friend of mine who was a CISO at an investment bank and she told me she only really cares about three things, budget, regulation and visibility. So, it's, well, she said, when something goes wrong, I need to I need to be able to tell my boss. So those three things, I think, um, is where the cybersecurity function looks at. But if I talk about data security, you could argue there's a lot more stakeholders involved in the decision making process. There's a lot more complexity. There could be a lot, a lot of different jurisdictions. There could be a lot of different uh, contextual understanding to what data types are. I mean, this is eminently more complex than cyber, or is it? What, what, I mean, what's your view on that? The, the, the data is the key. Um, understand that, like having a protection mechanism around that, and yes, governance has an input into that. But um, governance runs at a lot slower pace than the cybersecurity team, and cybersecurity should absolutely encompass data security, and governance should absolutely encompass data security. Uh, it, the, the two the two things are running at different paces because of the different uh, priorities and the different bubbles they live in. But it's essential that they that the the one commonality between them is the security of the data. Whose ownership is directly responsible for this actual data? That's a good question, and I think it, it really varies depending on the organisation. Um, <laughs> so you know th that particular method that you, you talked about kind of uses API and, and bots to take the data itself. So that suggests that well, two things actually. It suggests that the the perimeter isn't as well protected as you as you'd think you know they, they found a way in um but also it suggests that maybe there's not enough security awareness within the organization and you know hey I'm, I'm from a vendor but if you haven't got your security awareness right you know there's, there's only so much that technology can help you um i know within imperva we're regularly being tested on on, on cyber security because it's it's kind of our business now um but but it's it's regular um and also, it's, it's a big problem, this API is connecting to data. You know, we're seeing in future regulations, like we, we think in PCI4, that when a breach occurs, you're going to need to know, as an organization, who accessed that data and who took it. And at the moment, it's pretty typical, if you come in through an API or through an application, you don't know. And that's, that's the kind of the new frontier of data security is actually linking the two together. Um, have, have you any examples of where you guys have gone in and you've been asked to look at the the API integrity of an organization and, you know, where someone assumes they've got 500 APIs feeding into their data store and it's been it's turned out to be something drastically different. Is there any examples of that? You know, so we have lots of, of uh, examples like that, but I'll, I'll give you one with a name, which is Imperva. So we turned on our own API security. And, and found 2,000 unknown APIs that we wow. we had no idea about. So uh, you know, and we we talk openly about this. You know, we're we're a cybersecurity company. We implemented our own technology and we found all these APIs. So you know, in in the great scheme of things, Imperva are not a massive bank. You know, we're not a huge company, and we found 2,000. Now we've all, we've got lots of customer examples where we're talking hundreds of thousands of uh, unknown. APIs and you know that that it's again it's all part of the modernization the thing with uh, with COVID is what was called transformation you know six a six-year project had to happen in six months 
And we've kind of retired the term transformation and moved to modernization because now you've they've done all this kind of all this transformation has happened and now they actually need to make it secure. And that's kind of where we're at right now is companies don't know what APIs they've got. They don't they don't understand the bot traffic that's uh, that's hitting them right now. Um, it's just it's just happening uh, and there's no real security around it. This problem solvable. And if it, so, it, how? Yeah, and, and I, you know, I go back to, to two things. One thing that you said in, in your introduction, which rings very true, is all these teams are overstretched. They um, they don't have the capacity to take on uh, a, a, the amount of work and the amount of effort it is to get your arms around this problem. Uh, they need tools which have the ability to work at scale. Um, and, you know, AI tools is the way forward, the only way that you can move forward through this. Utilizing artificial intelligence and utilizing that, uh, this modern, this, everybody knows about it now since ChatGPT and has, has an idea of it, but, you know, this is the cutting edge technology. It's the only way that we're going to be able to analyze data at this scale to be able to get our arms around it. So you have your large language models, you have your very broad, wide horizontal language like AI models like like ChatGPT. These are great at providing, you know, answers in, in natural language and great at being able to emulate, you know, uh, a human. But you are able to um, to narrow this down. And, and one of the technologies that we use is is narrow, AI, narrow model AI. And you are basically distilling the the intelligence that you have in these really expensive, really costly large language models down into a more strategically focused and more vertical focused uh, AI models. Some of your capability to deal with runtime applications and the move it vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, because in certain circumstances, uh, organizations have that in an air gapped environment or on, on their own private cloud and so forth. So the the natural updates coming from the vendor were not applicable to it. And you guys um, had some very interesting capability around those types of vulnerabilities because I, re I guess why that's important is that the exploitation of that vulnerability left, uh, it, it, it resulted in direct data exfiltration from very large global brands, right? Which is this ransomware we're talking about. Um, but instead of it being a bot, it was the exploitation of a vulnerability in a widely used enterprise application. Um, can you maybe share how your perspectives on, on how Imperva deal with that challenge? Yeah, it's uh, and, and that comes back to which we haven't really mentioned with supply chain. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're all reliant on third party applications. That's just a fact. Now, some people say with things like Move It and before that there was Lockpool J and, you know, all these things, it was. Some people say, well, you know, that's the responsibility of that vendor of that application to fix. But you go to a CISO and tell them, you know, actually, don't worry about it. It's not your responsibility as the application. I think the CEO probably has a different view. It's like, well, this is a fundamental part of what we're doing. We need to protect that application. And so that that's a broader problem with, with supply chain right now. Now, in terms of what we're doing for it, yeah, so so you can, you can uh, block some of this stuff using simple WAF, you know, and we do. It's not real time though, so it's not an immediate, you need to write a rule and you need to implement it. Um, now with, with, our, uh, with our RASP solution, um, you can basically put a wrapper around the application and say, you know what, this application can only do one, two, three, these three things, anything else, we want it blocked. Um, and that's exactly, you know, very simple, but that's exactly what it does. It's, it's able to, to block things that, it's, that an application is not meant to do. So. Real uh, zero day vulnerabilities in applications, you're protected from from zero day. So it's uh, yeah, it, it, it's a big thing. Anthony, if I were to come to um, to you tomorrow and say, look, I'd like to understand if we fell victim to a ransomware attack, right? If they managed to subvert our security controls, we fell victim to a bot. They got access to a user. They escalated credentials. Uh, they deployed COBOL strike on the wire and they got to map out what our network looks like. Um, I want to understand what the blast radius looks like. What's the damage I'm going to have to deal with? Um, what does, I mean, can you talk through that scenario on how you would help mitigate that risk? Unstructured data is probably the, the most large, the, the most difficult problem to solve. So to understand what that 
uh, that data is is one of the should be the top priority for any organization understand what data you have understand who has access to that data so you have unstructured data on your sharepoint your onedrive your google drive you have it on your endpoints you have it on um, you have it all, uh, strewn across every sort of data store that you possibly have in an enterprise, uh, including including databases and um, you know everything that you can think of. And to get an idea and get your arms around it, you need to be able to accurately and quickly assess what is on the, what is that data. Is that critical information? Is that proprietary information? Is it containing my intellectual property? Is it containing some PHI? It's, it's, it's critically important to understand what is that data and who has access to the data. So when you encounter a situation where you have a bot who takes credentials, the average, out of, out of interest, like the average time that there is for somebody being breached and then realizing there's a breach, it's around about 250 to 280 days. There's somebody in your network floating around before they press the button to encrypt your data or steal it. So understanding what, you, what data you have and where it is 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 a first step in mitigating any problem that you may have with an attacker that's in your network unknown to you for that 250 or 280 days how is it that you guys you know how is it that you secure the database layer first of all we can go and find the data so let's let's start with that and then we can classify it but then we can go in and say okay look here, here's who's got access to what does this person need it um uh, and also what vulnerabilities do you have within your databases? So that's kind of like, you know, that's where we start. Where it gets really interesting is around the analytics because um, we can we can look at, you know, this is strange behavior compared to how you would normally behave. This is strange behavior compared to what your other colleagues are doing who should be doing the same thing. And then it's kind of what, you know, what do you want to do with that? Because you can go all the way up to blocking the access if that's what you want sure. to do. A lot, of, a lot of organizations are hesitant with that. But that is definitely an option. But where it where it actually becomes very interesting is is with NIST two, there's a there's a requirement to report very very quickly. Um, and I think I read that it was the even for the very best in class uh, organisations, it takes about sixty one days to get the information that they're going to need for NIST two. Um, and and I think the the requirement is thirty days. So most organisations by default are not going to be in compliance. But if you've got analytics on the data and suddenly you can go into into um, into uh, data security fabric, you can see exactly what's happened with the data right now. So you can take that 61 days down to, you know, a few hours. So on that note, thank you so much.